<clears throat> all right, Shalom. As always, before I begin, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Recha Kodash. All right, double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word and that rule well. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect that have been scattered abroad the four winds of the earth and that are in the hopes of mercy of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, during the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. And what you just heard right now, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, is the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. All right. Who you see in front of you right now is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right. Which means the existing one or He exists. And Bahashim means in the name. And Yahweh Shai is the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father who you see in front of you. All right. Who the world calls Jesus Christ. All right. And as you can see, the title of this lesson is the leaders of this people cause them to err. OK, and pretty much the the spirit jumped on me to make a, a quick little lesson on this. It's not going to be, uh, you know, we'll see what the spirit does. But I just wanted to speak upon some points that the beloved apostle Aramlab and other brothers have been saying that these different Israelite groups, you know, and I'm not going to mention any names, but the majority of them have taken the bag, you know, instead of seeing what Revelations, the 13th chapter, starting at the 15th verse on down really means they're leading our people straight to the slaughter and they're causing them to be destroyed. All right. Matter of fact, we'll get uh, Isaiah 9 and 16 really quick just to set the tone. Isaiah 9 verse 16. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. And that's where the majority of our people are going to be led to. Destruction, all right? Because here it is, um, not only is there a gang of receipts regarding that the sea hip is what is spoken of in Revelations, the 13th chapter, but you have these different um, um, whistleblowers, so to speak, uh, whistleblowers slash doctors that see what it is, you know. A woman by the name of Catherine Fitz um, was on a news channel the other day and she was exposing it, you know. She knows that that thing is what's spoken about in Revelations, the 13th chapter, all right. That Mark of the Beast is being more, um, you know, the light is being covered on it, all right. The people are seeing uh, what it is, you know, but here it is. You have these other Israelite groups that are still prophesying the same deceit. All right. And are trying to get the people to believe what they're saying. Matter of fact, we'll get there real quick. Ezekiel, the 13th chapter. Um, starting at the first verse. And the word of the heavenly father came unto me, saying, son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, okay? And that's what we're doing, you know? We're prophesying against these prophets because we know the fate that they're going to come into for lying and for taking that bag, okay? And say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, and that's what they're doing, you know? Prophesying unto the people deceits, so that they can get a, a bigger bag, so that they can get, you know, glory of man. That's not what this is about. It's about, it's about prophecy, okay? And what is prophecy? Matter of fact, let's get there real quick. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, okay? And this is John, the revelator, bowing down to an angel. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Heavenly Father for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is what? Is the spirit of prophecy. Okay? And the majority of these Israelite groups aren't speaking about prophecy. Prophecy is at the forefront right now. Any day, you know, Esau is going to come down with great wrath 
and he's going to implement that he's going to implement that thing you know we're just waiting for that next uh you know pandemic to hit and then once that comes hey that's when the that's when the faith is going to be tested that's where everything is going to be um brought to light so to speak all right and we're going to see who are truly the prophets of the heavenly father and who aren't matter of fact uh damn i think that's in jeremiah 28 verse 8 if i'm not mistaken um come on almost uh the point is in nine but i'm gonna start at the eighth verse the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of pestilence of war and of evil and of pestilence okay and that's the same thing that you know through the spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh being upon the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone, that's what they've been prophesying about. The destruction of Babylon the Great and the... Yeah, the destruction of Babylon the Great. All right? Because all the scriptures, that's what it all boils down to. All right? This place being broken down and the kingdom of heaven being risen up. Okay? But what are these different Israelite groups speaking about? A bunch of vanity, a bunch of BS that isn't doing nothing but, you know, making the people feel good. All right. Verse nine, this is the point. The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the, the <clears throat> excuse me, then shall the prophet be known that the heavenly father hath truly sent him. Okay, and just like in the book of Ecclesiastes, um, the third chapter tells us there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time for war and there's a time for love. Salaki, there's a time for war and there's a time of peace. There's a time to hate and there's a time for love. But right now, we're not in the time of peace. Right now, we're in the time of war and in the time to really, you know, starting to tighten up the nuts and bolts of our spirit, okay? Because we see the prophecies of the Heavenly Father, you know, flying off the pages of this book, you know? But what what do we see? The masses of our people being led to the slaughter, okay? But ultimately, it's all according to the plan of the Heavenly Father, all right? As the scripture says, many are called, but few are chosen to get this message, all right? And if you're able to understand anything that I'm saying, you got to praise the Heavenly Father every day for tapping into your pineal gland to open your eyes to this. All right. Because this is something beautiful, brothers. Not many people can understand what we understand. OK, that's why it's called Allah, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, that we even have this understanding. OK, because we were once part of this world. But as it says in Ephesians, the second chapter, it's at the grace of the Heavenly Father. Okay. So jumping back to Ezekiel, the 13th chapter, starting at the third verse. Thus saith the Heavenly Father power, woe, and as us brethren should know, that word woe means destruction. All right. Unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Okay. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Heavenly Father. Okay? And that's what we see right now, man. A lot of our people are not building up their faith for what's to come. They don't even have the foundation of where to build. You know? You have these different Israelite groups saying that Yahweh Shai is needed. So on and so forth, you know. There's going to come a time where reality is going to hit, okay. And when the day of Jacob's trouble is upon everyone, you're going to see who's going to be, um, who's going to be in the spirit of perplexity and who's going to be comforted by the Heavenly Father in those times, all right. 
Verse 6, They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Most High saith, and the Most High hath not sent them. And that's the spirit that these, pro these false prophets come into, man. Instead of telling the people of... Salakia. Excuse me. There. Instead of telling the people of the proper warning, they continue to, like it said, they continue in that lying divination. Okay? Telling the people that the Heavenly Father has sent them when in reality, well, Salakia, the Heavenly Father did send them, you know? Because at the end of the day, there's got to be those uh, spirits to deceive people. All right? But ultimately, we understand the fate of those men, okay? Which is nothing but death by pain, all right? As a matter of fact, I got another scripture regarding just, you know, the fate of these, um, these different Israelite groups that are prophesying unto deceits, you know? And once again, you know, I want to say double honors to the apostles, elders, and bishops, you know? And ultimately, you know, all praise to the Heavenly Father for putting the Spirit upon those men to, to be the men that we know them as today, all right? Because from decades ago, they were prophesying of this, all right? So much so that 30 years ago, you would see them as they were crazy, you know? Speaking about a chip being implemented, <clears throat> implemented into the right hand or your forehead, people were going slack. People were looking at them as if they were, you know, if they were off some sort of dread, all right? But now you're starting to lock you. Now you're starting to see these people, as I was uh, naming a couple of whistleblowers, and there's many out there, all right? But I just named a couple. They're starting to see that it's true, okay? But here it is that the apostles of Great Millstone have been prophesying this for for decades man which goes just <clears throat> which goes to show that the heavenly father is truly with them all right and as the scripture says you got to mark the perfect man all right because they're the ones that are going to really guide us to the right way okay but for the rest of these israelite groups that are you know prophesying of peace in the time of war, this is what you got to expect, all right? This is Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 13. Then said I, Ah, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, power, behold the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in, the, in this place. And that's what these people are prophesying about, you know? We see the famine being orchestrated and we see the sword being furbished, okay? But these different Israelite groups, are saying the exact opposite, you know? Verse 14, Then the Heavenly Father said unto me, The prophets prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision, okay? And divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. That's the spirit that these people come into, man. And it, you know, it really pisses you off because... They're just, you know, they're they're filled with bullshit, man. But at the end of the day, you got to understand that that the Heavenly Father uh, has set them up, okay? Because not everyone is supposed to get this, all right? Verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Most High concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land, by sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed, okay? And that's the fate of, you know, these different uh, Israelite camp leaders that aren't following the ways of the prophets that the Heavenly Father has set up, all right? Verse 16, And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine, and the sword, all right? That's the fate of the congregation that they're teaching, okay? They're going to get that same fate. And they shall have none to bury them, them, their wives, nor their sons, 
nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. All right. That's why, like I said, you really got to thank the Heavenly Father that he's tapped you into this truth. All right. To the true men that the Heavenly Father is dealing with. All right. Which are the apostles, bishops and elders of Great Milestone. They have the spirit of prophecy on them, okay? Because like I said, from decades ago, they were in the spirit of prophecy. They were in the spirit of Yahawashai, speaking about one of the main uh, prophecies that is detrimental, okay? So from there, I want to go to the book of Jeremiah, 35th chapter. I believe the 15th verse. My fuck. Come on, yeah, 15. Jeremiah 35, verse 15. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way. And that's what the Heavenly Father has done from year after year, you know? Many, uh, man, there's too many videos that brothers are putting up, all right? And that fulfills that prophecy, you know? And as it says in Isaiah 62, I believe, oh, yeah, Salakia. I believe that's Isaiah 62, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. The Heavenly Father has constantly had his watchmen on their towers, okay? Looking for the evil and blowing that trumpet, okay? I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. And every day, you always see brothers, whether it be in uh, America or, um, you know, other third world countries like Nigeria, you know, Italy, Mexico, Puerto Rico. Brothers are putting out that message, man. And it goes to show that this prophecy is coming to pass, you know, because this word is is coming out in abundance, all right? So much so that no one is going to have any pity in the uh, times of Jacob's trouble, all right? Because as the beloved elder Mawatazak always says, there's someone that knows someone, that has a friend that knows someone, that knows where the prophets are, okay? And yes, Laki, that's all I wanted in that scripture. Going back to Jeremiah 35, verse 15. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way and amend your doings and go not after other gods to serve them. Okay. And the main God that our people serve is the system of Babylon the Great. Okay. And what's going to seal that deal is that Sihip. Okay, that's why we tell you, brothers, to, you know, to start preparing yourself for what's to come, you know, start spiritually building yourself to be in certain predicaments that are going to look damn near impossible. Okay, because the majority of our people, as it says in Isaiah, the 30th chapter, they're going to go down to Egypt for help. All right, but that's going to lead you to your own death. By the Heavenly Father, all right? And go not after other gods to serve them, and ye shall dwell in the land which I have given you, <clears throat> Slakia, and ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me, okay? And that's, you know, that's basically the point I wanted there, you know? Although this message is going out day in and day out, the Heavenly Father still has those spiritual blinders on the people, okay? Because as it says in Matthew's the seventh chapter. Oh, Salaki, I was thinking of um, the straight gate, Salaki, but this is Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen, okay? And that's just the, that's part of this bitter, uh, this bitter role. You know, although you want someone to understand this word, it it all falls into the hands of the Heavenly Father. 
All right? That's why you got to praise the Heavenly Father every day that you're given the opportunity to understand a, a prophecy that many other people can't understand, you know? So with that, you know, I pray that you brothers have been edified. Lord's will, this uh, video was exhorting and straight to the point. But, hey, man, we see, we see this sea hip coming to pass very soon, you know? All we're waiting for is this uh, next you know, pandemic to play out. And once that takes place and this, um, you know, Babylon the Great and all the other uh, countries in the world are locked down, that's when you got to, you know, that's where you got to lock in, okay? Because the prophecies are going to start bouncing, all right? So with that, I pray that you brothers have been edified once again. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Milestone. And once again, peace and blessings go out to the hopeful elect. And until next time, hey, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatham. Shalom, Akiah.